Bibb County Ford dealer. Life of Virginia. See your Life of Virginia agent. Wayne's Auto Sales. Home of the real Wayne. Tonight's game is also sponsored by Yeoman Chevrolet, Barnes Fur, Great Coverings, Stevens Men's Shop, and Papa Gallo. Now to the floor at... Good evening, everybody, and welcome to live high school basketball here on Channel 13. Tonight, we are pleased to be bringing you the SEAIS Girls State AAA Championship between the Lady Mustangs of Monroe and the Southland Lady Raiders. I'm Frank Malloy. I'll be calling the play-by-play -play for this girls game. Alongside me, Brad Bibb, who himself played in a state championship team, was he was at Stratford many years ago. Bradley, what about playing in a state championship game? You played in one back in 78 with Stratford. A little bit about the pressure and some of the feelings these teams have to be going through. You know, you play the whole year long, and it comes down to a three-game tournament, and that's what we're seeing here. You're seeing three days. You've got to go out and execute. And you got to have a lot of momentum when you go into a state championship game. Right now, I think Monroe has momentum from their come from behind win yesterday. But you got to like Southland also because they beat a team that had defeated them three times during the season. So we got a good mixture, a team that should be here against a team that shouldn't. Anything can happen in a state tournament game. An interesting aspect of this ball game. This is the first meeting of the season between these two teams, despite the fact they're not that far away and they play in the same bracket in AAA. They met twice last year. And Monroe came away winners both times, but of course we all know what happened last year doesn't matter this year. Off of last night's game, though, you figured the edge should go to Monroe. I saw both teams play last night, and Southland did play well because they beat a team that had beaten them three times. But Monroe came from 10 points down, and you could see fire in those seniors' eyes when they got down in the fourth quarter. They came back and did what they had to do to win, and that's tough to stop, especially when you're going in a state final. We'll be back with more of our pregame show live from Stratford. You're watching High School Basketball on Channel 13. And Brad Bibb back with you live from the Stratford gym for tonight's AAA SEAIS State Girls Championship game. Monroe against Southland. Let's talk about the contrast between these teams. Monroe, of course, a very quick team. They like to the pressure, whereas Southland's got the big girls inside. Yeah, they do. And what's strange about it is Southland has played with big people all year long. And last night, they came out and pressed FPD and did a good job of it. So it'll be interesting to see if they come out tonight and try to press uh, Monroe. But Monroe handles the ball very well. All right, now, Monroe is the defending state champion. What about the pressure they'll be feeling? Of course, last year they sort of snuck up on some people. They beat Windsor last year, which was considered to be the favorite, and then they beat Westfield in the finals. What about being the favorite all year long? Do you figure that might work for their advantage in this final game against them, or what? I'm sure before the ball game, the pressure will be a little bit on them. They won it last year. They are expected to win this year. When I was a senior, we were expected to win the state championship. But once you start playing and getting up in the flow of the ball game, I don't think that matters. Right now will be the only time they're feeling it, but I'm sure once they throw the ball up, that won't be a, a difference. What type of game do you think? A fast-paced game? Do you figure that Southland may try and hold the ball a little bit to offset the quickness of Monroe, or do you figure they'll come out and try and push it too? I think if they go up against Monroe's press and they beat it, they'll try to see what they have. If they got a layup, sure, they'll go ahead and take it. If they don't, I feel like they'll settle up in a half-court game and try to go inside. They're a much bigger team than Monroe. They got a lot of good baskets inside. The paint area is what a lot of people call it. They might go inside and work the half-court offense. Of course, Monroe comes in with a very impressive 27-3 record. They were the Region 2 regular season champions. They breezed through the regular season. They did not lose a game. They did not lose a game in the region tournament, and they've been playing some very good basketball. Southland, as you said, sort of the surprise team. They come in with a 16-8 record, but they've been playing very well of late against Presbyterian. They did what they had to do, and they were very impressive against Westfield. Maybe the momentum might be on their side. Yeah, when you come down the stretch, it doesn't matter what you've done during the season. It's a state tournament time, and when you've got momentum and you can move like they have and through the tournament, you got a real good shot. What about the fourth quarter? That's where most of these championship games will be decided. Of course, Monroe came from way back last night. Will that work to their favor if, say, Southland has a lead in the fourth quarter? I would think it would just because of that. I have come back last night. They were down 10 points with 635 to go. They pressed all over. They converted on offense. They did everything they had to do to win, and I'm sure that'll work in their favor. Whereas Southland last night led most of the way. It was a nip and tuck game. They never really had to come from way behind. Indeed, Monroe will probably be feeling the pressure, as we said. They were expected to be the state champions this year. They won it last year. They had a very large number of people coming back, including their standout, Rhonda Griffin. Whereas Southland comes in rather loose, it should be an interesting matchup. Do you think the start will be the key? The team that gets out of the gate fast, might they have an advantage? I think so. Any time that you can get out, the first five minutes is what we used to talk about when I played. First five minutes, very key for both clubs. You like to get out of the gate early, build a lead, maybe not necessarily run away with a basketball game, but set your tempo the way you're going to play for the night. So I'm sure both clubs will be saying, in high school ball, it's a little different. Say the first four be trying to fill the other one out, and I'm sure it will be important, but uh, 
once it gets going, I don't think it'll be any big key. We're looking forward to a great matchup. It's Monroe against Southland. We'll be back with more live basketball action from Stratford. You're watching High School Basketball on Channel 13. And we are back here at Stratford's Eagle Gymnasium, getting ready for the start of tonight's girls AAA state championship. The Southland Lady Raiders come in at 16 and 8. They were the Region 1 runners-up. And the Monroe Lady Mustangs are 27 and 3. We see both teams are still out on the court warming up. We got about three minutes left before we'll have the introduction of the starting lineups and the opening tip-off. Frank Malloy working along with Brad Bibb. David Lucy is in his seventh year at Monroe. He's already won two state championships. He's coming off one last year. And for Southland, it'll be Jerry Perkins. He's their head coach. It should be a very interesting matchup, as Brad said, one characterized by quickness against height, although Southland has managed to display the fact that they can play either way, which could prove to be a factor tonight. It could be. Uh, one thing you got to like about Monroe is they are so fundamentally sound. David Lucy does such a good job stressing fundamentals, and uh, they just pass the ball well. They don't turn it over a lot. Uh, you got to like that, especially this time of year. Indeed, fundamentals is something that's sometimes lacking in high school basketball, but these two teams have gotten here because they handle the fundamentals very well. They're good foul shooting teams, and they also play very good defense. So we might be expecting a low scoring game. Monroe only scored 48 points yesterday, although Southland did manage to score a number more against Presbyterian, but you're never really sure what type. Usually, though, in your opinion, state finals, do you think they'll tend to be low scoring? You think one team may be able to run away and build up a big score or what? Usually they are low scoring for the fact that uh, most of the teams are cautious, more cautious. Uh, they're not going to gamble as much as they would, say, in the first game of December. <laughs> they're going to be patient on offense more so than they would normally. Uh, you do feel the nerves a little in this. Uh, I told you earlier that I don't think pressure's that much to Monroe's advantage or disadvantage, but your nerves do tell you where you are. And you're in a state championship game. It's a once-of-a-lifetime thing for a lot of people, although some of these Monroe girls have been here before. But you're a little more cautious because you know that each time down the floor you have the basketball, you have a chance to score and uh, you need to convert as many times as possible. So with that in mind, uh, you gotta say that it'd probably be low scoring because each team will take more time on offense. And of course, we are bringing you this girls game live, but coming up on a tape delay basis tonight at 11.30 will be the boys AAA state championship. That'll mount, match the Cavaliers of Mount the Sales against the Savannah Red Raiders, a game you were privileged to witness last night was the Mount the Sales Stratford matchup. And that was really a lot of team people expected those two teams to make it to the finals. They ended up beating in the semifinals, but Mount the Sales, what about the effect that game might have on them as they get ready to play later on tonight in the boys championship? Well, that could uh, cause problems for them. They came in as the tournament favorite. Uh, a lot of people thought that Stratford and Mount DeSales had the best two teams in the state. Uh, they met, uh, as you mentioned, in the semifinals with DeSales winning over Stratford for the third time, which uh, you got to believe they were the best team of the two, those two teams. But you got Savannah in the other bracket, and uh, nobody's giving them much credit. They've breezed through their, uh, their round, and they've gotten all the way to the championship game. They played Stratford in this building to within one point. John Hilburn saved Stratford. They defeated Stratford down in Savannah. And uh, they're not saying a whole lot about the uh, Savannah Christian team. And so we could have uh, quite a battle on our hands in that one as well. As you can see, both teams have finished their pre-game warm-ups. And they're running to their respective huddles. The Lady Mustangs will gather around David Lucy in his seventh year. He has won two state championships at Monroe in 1979 and in 1984. Jerry Perkins is the head coach of the Region 1 runners-up from Americus, the Southland Lady Raiders. They come in with a 16 and 8 record, but they have been playing good basketball of late. It should be a very interesting matchup. And we're getting ready for the introduction of the starting lineups coming to you from Stratford's Eagle Gym, a beautiful facility here. Plenty of space for all the fans that'll be jamming their way into this place. And there is a good crowd gathering for this girls' championship game, which is almost set to tip off. We're getting ready now for the introduction of the starting lineups. The Lady Raiders of Southland, Region 1 runners up. Jerry Perkins is their head coach. He's assisted by Craig Rhodes. The Monroe Lady Mustangs are the champions of Region 2. David Lucy is their head coach. He is assisted by Chuck Gibson. Very spirited crowd when you get down this late in the season of the state championship. Both, both teams and fans pretty much let it all hang out. You can see some of the Monroe guys, they've got their pain on. Boy, they really fired up for this one. Indeed, they do. Here come the starting lineups. Number 14, Julie Young for Southland. Also, number 22, Michelle Milton. She is a junior. Rachel Allen, number 32. She is also a junior. Martha Jane Billings. They showed the ability to hit from the outside. She is just a sophomore. And the big girl in the middle, Leah Williams, she is a senior. They are coached by Jerry Perkins. And now for the Monroe Lady Mustangs, coached by David Lucy. 
Galen Lawson starts at one guard. She is a sophomore. Virginia Childs will also be starting. She is just a junior. She played a big role in their win last year. Deanne Barker, one of two seniors they start. She'll be wearing number 12. Janet Lundy, a junior. She wears number 14. And Rhonda Griffin, she's the one that makes the Lady Mustangs go. She'll be wearing number 24. She is a senior, and she is the girl that hit the winning basket last night as Monroe just did manage to get past a very good Deerfield-Windsor team out of Albany. Winning basket came with seven seconds left. David Lucy said they got the ball in the right girl's hands, but the way they got it wasn't the way he diagnosed it. It just ended up that way, and sometimes that's the way those type of things go. It wasn't a set play at all, but uh, I'm sure that David was happy when he saw Rodney Griffin come up <laughs> that's with the right. basketball. She's the one you'll be looking for. We have the handshake at center court and ready to bring you live Girls State Championship basketball, the SEIS AAA title tilt between Monroe and Southland. Southland controls the tip. Michelle Milton works outside. Up top to Julie Young. Southland has shown a tendency to fire away from the outside when they get the opportunity. Milton called for traveling. We have our first turnover. Well, you see early that the officials aren't going to let them get away with much as far as their pivot feet go. That's the way the, the trend has been the whole tournament. They don't uh, allow you to move that pivot foot or even slide it just a bit without calling traveling. Galen Lawson sets it up, sets up the offense. Deanne Barker, now to Virginia Childs. Galen Lawson, just a 10th grader, but she's played very well. She made a couple of big baskets last night. Eddie Mustangs looking for the good shot. Rhonda Griffin's got it inside, and she hits the first basket. Lady Mustangs are on top, 2-0. Rhonda Griffith is on the scoreboard. They got it where they wanted that time, Frank. They love to get it inside to Rhonda, and she's a good scorer in there, and she showed it right there. And a quick 10-second turnover as the Lady Mustangs come out with the press and have forced turnover number two. Childs handling the ball to Lawson. She looks to the corner to Lundy. This is Griffin. She's cut off at the baseline. Childs outside. Lady Mustangs very patient. Griffin's got it off the glass and in. So Rhonda Griffin has hit her first two shots, and the Lady Mustangs have jumped out to a quick 4 0 lead, and they're in the press. Michelle Milton breaks the press. Martha Jane Billings. Lady Mustangs double teaming at every opportunity. Well, they're coming out with that tenacious defense, both full court and half court, and that's what's uh, carried them this far, and there's no need to change when you're in a state final. Body contact, no foul. Julie Young will try it, no good. But there's that height advantage inside. Lee Williams misses once. Scramble for it, jump ball. That is the one advantage that Southland has, is that tremendous height inside. Lee Williams, number 24, missed the short one. She's by far the tallest girl in the tournament. Looks to be a mismatch here on the jump, and it is. Billings hits it. Arthur Jane Billings has Southland on the scoreboard. Just over six minutes to play. It's 4-2 Monroe. You see how the Lady Mustangs like to get it. As soon as it goes in the hole, they like to take it out and push it down the floor. They've got a foul called on Rhonda Griffin of Monroe. Her first, the team's first. Southland will inbound from under their own basket. The Lady Mustangs will press. Lee Williams took too many. Well, Southland did a good job of breaking the press, but they got it into the big girl, probably a little further out than she's used to handling it. And she had to take it, and she forgot to put it on the floor not, first. Not, not used to dribbling it. 4-2, Monroe leads. Just underway first quarter. Live girls championship basketball here on Channel 13. Lawson outside. Childs looks inside. Griffin's got it, loses it. Off Southland. Monroe will keep it. Southland in a 2-1-2 defense. Rhonda Griffin's been working around the paint area, right around the bucket. And she's been getting open. That time the ball stripped away from her out of bounds. Lundy inbounds. She's got the shot, and she's hit it. Janet Lundy. First basket for her. The Lady Mustangs lead it by four at 6-2. Again, the press. Julie Young will try and break it. They're going to have to hurry to get it across the timeline. They just do. Young in a hurry. Stops, pops, and hits. Young did a great job. She just took it between two defenders, took it all the way to the basket. Lady Mustangs by two. Childs takes it all the way. Dishes off to Lundy. 
Three seconds. First turnover against Monroe. Southland with a basket can tie. Again, the press. Milton. Southland showing some good ball handling, but there's on the floor and a jump ball. Well, Monroe usually does a real good job of containing in their press. But the last two times down, Southland's been able to split the seam, so to, so to say. They've gone through two defenders, and I'm sure David Lucy's trying to tell his club to close up the gaps and not let anybody break on him. Scramble for the loose ball is controlled by Southland. Julie Young up top, she'll quarterback the offense. Lob pass inside to Becky Austin. Puts it up, no good, she was traveling. So Southland has swapped out their big girls. They brought number 54, Becky Austin, in and sat down number 24, Leah Williams. They don't really lose much in size. You see a little of their game plan right there, Frank. They were trying to go inside to their big people. I guess they feel that was their advantage. Beautiful feed from Rhonda Griffin to Deanne Barker, but she is also caught traveling. Well, that was an example of Monroe's passing. Griffin dished off beautifully, and they had the two points except for the travel, but that's a... Good example of how Monroe moves the ball, not only around the perimeter, but inside as well. Both teams a little bit nervous starting off. Milton, she gets cut off, dishes back outside Martha Jane Billings. They look inside to Alston, trying to force it inside, turnover against Southland. What Southland has to watch here is not become too conscious about driving it inside every time. They came down the last time, they got it inside, had a traveling violation. That time they might have tried to force it a little bit. And they have to just take what Monroe gives them. And Maffitt is in the game for Southland. Griffin, nice move inside. And we've got a foul called on Becky Alston. It is her first, team's first. 6-4 Monroe, 4 minutes, 14 seconds left in the clock. Monroe inbounds from under their basket. Janet Lundy to Deanne Barker, tries to go inside to Griffin. Barker's got it back and she hits the jumper. Deanne Barker has her first basket. And it's 8-4, Monroe on top. Again, the press. Nice, beautiful execution there. Traveling again on the big girl, Becky Alston. Well, they're doing a good job, Frank, of uh, breaking the press. As I mentioned, they, they split the seam again. They got it inside to the big girl, but uh, once again, she's not used to handling the ball, and she traveled with it. Childs inside puts up a difficult shot. It won't go. Southland wants to run. Michelle Milton, ball tipped away beautifully by Galen Lawson. Monroe gets back very well. Yeah, they run from baseline to baseline about as good as any, any team you'll ever see. They really sprint. Julie Young with the basketball for the Lady Raiders. Bomb from Martha Jane Billing. She likes to shoot from the outside. Saved beautifully by Gaylor Lawson, the Virginia Childs. Now it's Lawson. Barker starts her drive. And we got a foul called. That will be against number 14, Julie Young. With the push. Lawson just attempted her, and you saw her hustling after that loose ball. She plays the, plays about as poised as any senior, and she is just a 10th grader. Lundy from the side. Yes! Lundy now has four, and the Lady Mustangs lead by six. And a timeout for the Southland Lady Raiders. Gary Perkins giving his squad the sign that he wants a stoppage in play. Three minutes, 15 seconds left in the first quarter. It is Monroe 10 and Southland 4. And Brad, your evaluation thus far of how the game is going. Well, pretty much the way we thought coming in, Frank. Monroe's trying to use speed. They've pressed uh, full court on their baskets. And uh, the press has been effective in the fact that it's produced turnovers. Southland uh, has gotten it down and broken the press at, near the midcourt line. But when they get inside, they've turned it over, traveling violations, and they've thrown the ball away a couple of times. The purpose of the press is to force turnovers, not necessarily to steal the ball every time. So in that evaluation, the row the press has worked uh, to perfection thus far. You think Southland might try and do something different? They've been breaking the press, getting the ball to the big girl, and she's been traveling. Do you think they might try and go with a smaller lineup or maybe try and give the ball to somebody else at the top of the circle? Well, they might do that, or Jerry Perkins might be telling his guards, once you break the press, if you can't take it all the way to the bucket yourself, let's set it up and uh, see if we can run some offense. When they've gotten into their half-court game, they've been able to lob it inside to the big girls, so there's no problem there. And he might be saying, hey, let's, we're getting it in the front court, and then we're turning it over, not even giving ourselves a chance to score. Both teams are back out on the court. Monroe on top 10 for the Lady Mustangs have gotten off to a very good start shooting from the floor. And again, they're in the press. 
Arthur Jane Billings will inbound. They look for the double team again. They'll go lob it for the big girl, and the Lady Mustangs get a steal. Galen Lawson to Janet Lundy. She brings it back outside. Rhonda Griffin has got the shot. Won't go. Rebound Martha Jane Billings for Southland. Well, Monroe had been red hot from the floor. They haven't missed but two or three shots. That was not a bad shot at all by Griffin. She usually hits those. Kaylin Lawson will pick up the personal there. That'll be her first and the team's second as Monroe plays that very aggressive defense. Monroe will pressure even on the inbounds. You watch uh, little Galen Lawson. She'll come up and put some pressure on somebody as soon as the ball's thrown in. They really like to get after you on defense. Julie Young controls for Southland at the top of the circle. Tries to lob it inside. Becky Alston puts up the short shot. Air ball. Rebound controlled by Monroe's Virginia Childs. Well, they try to go into the big girl once again. They're getting the basketball to her, but they're not getting any points right now. Griffin will try it. No good. Rebound inside. Southland, we've got a foul called against Monroe. Well, Southland does a good job boxing out. They do have the size advantage, and when you have the size advantage, there's no excuse for you to get beat on the boards unless you're not blocking out. And thus far, they've done a pretty good job of that. Janet Lundy picks up the personal, her first and the third team foul. Southland trails by six. They control the basketball in the backcourt. Lee Williams is in, and Becky Alston has taken a seat on the bench for Southland. Martha Jane Billings likes to shoot from the outside. Thus far, she's only had a chance to fire one up. We have a foul called on Rhonda Griffin, and that is her second. So David Lucy now has a decision with 2.06 left in the first quarter. Rhonda Griffin, considered by many the best private school player in the state, and Lucy will indeed get her out, and I think that's a wise decision. You're up six points. You sure don't want uh, one of your best players to get in foul trouble early. Number 15, Angie Dills, texts in as Rhonda Griffin takes a seat with two quick personal fouls. From the corner, Martha Jane Billings, no good. The Lady Mustangs look to run. Janet Lundy will slow it down. Southland got back. Lawson had an opening. She tries to put it up and gets hacked. Foul will be on Martha Jane Billings. That is her first third team foul. Jerry Perkins did not agree with the call. Well, they packed the zone in a little bit that time, and uh, it's going to give some of the Monroe perimeter shooters a chance. Galen Lawson, an excellent shooter, as you mentioned earlier. She had a couple of big baskets yesterday, and the come from behind went over Deerfield Windsor. And she's perfect with her first. First point of the game for Galen Lawson, just a 10th grader. And Monroe leads by 7, 11 4. In and out, rebound Deanne Barker. And get her for traveling. Lady Mustangs have opened up a quick seven point lead. 142 left in the turning clock first quarter. Michelle Milton. And the Lady Mustangs have a steal. The defense is taking its toll on Southland. Julie Young goes for the steal, didn't get it, and gets a foul instead. Her second, fourth on Southland. And Kim Doan will come in to take Julie Young's place for the Lady Raiders. So Young was a little frustrated on the turnover. She tried to get it back. Almost uh, reached in and picked the pocket of Galen Lawson, but then she was called for the foul. Lawson up top for the Lady Mustangs, who with a basket go up by nine. They get it inside to Angie Dills. Her shot is no good. Rebound underneath the end. Barker, it won't fall. And traveling against Southland. So just as we said that Monroe was red hot from the field, they've missed their last five in a row, but South still lead by seven. Southland went to a 1-3-1 one, one zone that time. Uh, maybe trying to cut off a little bit of the outside shooting of Monroe. They, they got it in the paint, but uh, they missed a short shot. Lawson inbounds from underneath. Childs from the corner will try it off the front rim. No good. And Lee Williams rebounds for Southland. Well, Southland's got both big girls in now, Frank. We'll have to see what they do on the offensive end. Indeed, both Lee Williams and Becky Austin are underneath. This is Austin. She'll go with the bank shot. It won't go. Childs battles for the rebound of Southland's Renee Reeves and Monroe controls. Well, that time they had both the big girls for Southland down on the block, and the point guard was trying to avoid the pressure. She didn't really see him until too late. They had a sure layup, and I'm sure Jerry Perkins will say, hey, let's look down low because the big girls have been open. We have a traveling call against Galen Lawson for Monroe. 
Play has gotten a bit ragged here the last minute or so, but the Lady Mustangs still hold a seven-point lead at 11 to four, 52 seconds left in the turning clock in the first quarter. There's Austin underneath the other big girl, Lee Williams. She's got the short bank and hits it. That time they did work it to perfection. They got it to her down inside. As we see a traveling violation on Dana Lawson. They got it inside where she didn't have to dribble. All she had to do was turn and bank it off the glass, and that was very effective that time. So Sopham can cut the lead to three with a basket. Martha Jane Billings will inbound. Kim Doan thought about it, then decided not to. Doan will fire from way out. No good. Austin's got the rebound and put it back in. There's that size advantage once again. Becky Austin hits its 11 to 8 Monroe. Virginia Childs, Galen Lawson from way outside, in and out. Rebound the Lady Raiders, Martha Jane Billings. Monroe picks up in the backcourt. Kim Doan. Back to Billings. They got the big girls down on the block again, open if they can get them the basketball. Doan will fire from the top of the circle. No good. Rebound Janet Lundy. Galen Lawson, time expires. We've come to the end of the first quarter here at Stratford. The Monroe Lady Mustangs lead the South Pole Lady Raiders 11 to 8. You're watching live high school basketball on Channel 13. Leading South in 11-8, we're getting ready to start the second quarter, and Rhonda Griffin does start the second quarter on the bench. Angie Dills will jump center from Monroe. Griffin picked up two quick fouls in the first quarter. I think as long as David Lucy feels he's got the ball game in control or leading, he's going to leave Rhonda on the bench until at least the third quarter. South has got the two big girls inside. Becky Alston is fouled as they tried to lob it into her. Well, you can tell what Southland's game plan is going to be. They were trying early to get it inside, and they haven't uh, gone away from that. Once again, they try to lob it inside, and both teams, I guess, now in the bonus. Yes, that was Angie Dills picking up her first foul, but it was the 15th foul. Becky Alston shoots the one and one for Southland. Off the back bracket, no good, and over the back goes Lee Williams picking up her first foul. And that is the 15th foul on Southland. And we will go to the opposite end of the court. Well, we talked about Monroe being fundamentally sound. There's another example there. Blocking out on the missed free throw, and they're able to pick up the foul. Angie Dills is at the free throw line, during the front end of a one and one. In and get out again. The fire baskets had a lid on it for Monroe about the last two minutes of the first quarter, and thus far in the second quarter. <laughs> Inside, Lee Williams. Six-footer, no good. Becky Alston rebounds, throws it high off the glass and in. The size is really hurting Monroe right now. Alston has four, and Southland's within one at 11-10. Loose ball. Dills picks it up. Deanne Barker, nice move inside. Good and a foul. Beautiful move right there. She took it up with the off hand. She's right-handed, and she laid it in off the glass with the left hand. That was a pretty move. Ian Barker with a superb one-on-one -on -one move there. And picks up the foul, that is her second. And Barker can complete the three-point play. She has four points. Again, it won't go. Twice in a row, their foul shots have gone in and come out. Kim Doan falls down, scramble right in front of us, front. and we've got a jump ball. Good trap out front that time by Monroe. They sealed her, didn't let her get through the, the trap. And that's when the press is effective. You've got to contain. If you let someone go through the middle of a trap, then you're really dead because they're playing four on three. Many Mustangs lead by three. 7-14 left second quarter. Live from Stratford. Virginia Childs controls for Monroe. Immediately vowed to retaliate by attacking a... Sunday. Through the Sluggers, 1985. Stop Southland's offense. The best way to get into the offense, and that's what he's trying to do with the press. But as of late, they've had a lot of success getting it into the big girls. Lawson from way out. No, and Austin rebounds. Lady Raiders can cut it to one with a basket. Renee Reeves gets double teamed, nowhere to turn, and she travels. Monroe really putting the clamps on Southland once they get it across midcourt. David Lucy on his feet giving instructions. 
Well, Jerry Perkins didn't seem to uh, disagree with the call. He walked down to the end of the scorer's table like he might uh, protest it a little, thought it might be a bump. Lawson Monroe, thought about it. Monroe was really with the pressure defense. Deanne Barker tosses that to Virginia Childs. She saved it, but it ends up in the hands of Kim Doan for Southland. Doan to Lee Williams, back to Doan. They look inside to Becky Austin. She's got it. She dishes to Lee Williams, who hits. Southland's been very effective the last few minutes after a slow start of getting the ball inside. Williams has four. Monroe's lead one. Offensive foul, Angie Dills Monroe. Her second. And Rhonda Griffin will get back into the ball game. Yeah, as long as David felt like the tempo was in his favor, he was going to leave her out. But right now, the tempo and the uh, momentum has shifted into Southland's favor, even though they're behind. And he feels like he's got to get Rhonda back, and I'm, I think that's a pretty smart move right here. Griffin in Virginia Childs takes a seat on the bench. Perfect place right there for the trap, right? Woo! Over and back. Renee Reeves knew as soon as she threw the pass that <laughs> she had done wrong. But that was, it was the perfect, she could do about perfect it. place for the trap is right when they cross the timeline. There's nowhere to go but forward. And Monroe sealed off all the passing lanes. The only place she could go was back. And that is a turnover. They look inside to Griffin. She's there. Puts it off the glass. No good. And Becky Austin grabs the rebound with some force. Southland can take the lead with a basket. Monroe's got the steal. Deanne Barker all the way. Lay up and in. Barker has six. Monroe leads by three. Becky Alston dishes to Renee Reese. Back out top of Kim Doan. She'll set it up. Lob pass inside. We got a foul called on number 24, Lee Williams, and that will be her third. A lot of go against Southland. That time Monroe sa sagged well on defense. The pass was a little short, and uh, Williams was trying to help out, but and she pushed off. That was her second for Lee Williams, not her third. So both the big girls, Lee Williams and Becky Alston, have two fouls apiece. Alston has taken a seat on the bench. Oh. Angie Dills will shoot. She is 0 for 1 from the line thus far. She hits this one. Similar, similar ball game as Monroe played last night. They started out good, and then uh, Deerfield caught fire, came close. Monroe was able to keep the lead for most of the half, and that's the way this one's uh, starting out here tonight. So Dills hits them both. She has two points, and Monroe's lead back to five at 17 to 12, and they continue the pressure. Julie Young will break the press. Martha Jane Billings is trying to get open for that outside shot. Thus far, she's been unable to. Young will drive all the way, fired up off the glass, gets her own rebound. Back up, no good. Rhonda Griffin rebound, starts the break for Monroe. Lawson to Lundy. Lundy's too hard off the glass, the foul on Galen Lawson. Well, they ran a pretty break that time. Griffin got the rebound, she got it out quick. They had a two on one, and they just came up a little empty. They had the, they had the numbers that time on the break. Kaylin Lawson picks up her second personal foul. And it will send Martha Jane Billings to the line. She had a big game against Westfield a couple of nights ago in the opening round of this state tournament. She has two points. No good. Rebound picked up inside by Renee Reeves. Her shot is no good, but she is fouled by Deanne Barker. Well, it's getting a little warm in here. Things are starting to heat up. Indeed they are. Christy Cameron checks in for the Lady Mustangs, taking Janet Lundy's place. Cameron is just a ninth grader, but she also played a very big role in their win yesterday. Well, she's played good uh, the last five or six games, and uh, she's going to be a really good one. Just a ninth grader, like you mentioned. Renee Rees hits the front end of the one and one. She has her first point. 17-13, Southland trails by four, make it three as Rees hits them both. Rachel Allen has checked into the ball game for the Southland Lady Raiders. They trail it by three. Once again, they're going to that 1-3-1 zone, Frank. Let's see if uh, Monroe can attack it on the inside. They try to go in there right away. 
Cameron from the outside, her first shot of the game, no good. Rebound controlled by Lee Williams from Martha Jane Billings. Lost out of bounds off of Michelle Milton. Again, the Monroe defense is bothering the Southland Lady Raiders. When they get beat on defense, the Monroe girls, they sprint right back and they try to force something else. And you gotta like that characteristic about it. Lawson up top. Angie Dills inside was not quite tall enough to handle that pass. Turnover against the Lady Mustangs. Rachel Allen traveled. So play has again become ragged here in the second quarter with Monroe holding a 17 to 14 lead. So it's a key part of the ball game right here, Frank. We're inside the uh, final four minutes of the second quarter. Both clubs want to go to the dressing room with some momentum. And right now, neither team seems to want to take it. And we'll have a jump ball call there. Rhonda Griffin's pass was tied up. Christy Cameron will jump from Monroe. Martha Jane Billings for Southland. 3.47 left second quarter. Griffin controls from Monroe to Lawson. Dills in the corner to Griffin. Three people around Rhonda Griffin. Ball tipped out of bounds by Southland. Well, they know where the Monroe strength is inside. It's number 24, Rhonda Griffin. And Southland doing a good job right there of sagging and helping out on her. Griffin tries to feed inside. Ball kicked by Martha Jane Billings. It still belongs to the Lady Mustangs. Deanne Barker will inbound. Lawson from up top. She's got it. Galen Lawson gets her first field goal. Third point of the night, and Monroe leads by five. She's the kind of shooter, Frank, that uh, once she gets started, she can really light it up. You might call her a streak shooter in the means that once she hits one or two, she can be awfully deadly out there. Martha Jane Billings can shoot it, but she's short that time. Rebound Lee Williams underneath. She puts it up no good. A third try by Michelle Milton is no good, and the Lady Mustangs finally get the rebound. Rhonda Griffin in a hurry. Starts her drive, pulls up with a fall away. No good gets her own rebound back, puts it up and in. Rhonda Griffin was not to be denied there. She has six. Monroe leads by seven at 21 to 14. Jerry Perkins says it's time for us to talk it over. So it's Monroe 21, Southland 14. You're watching live high school basketball on Channel 13. We're down. She finally, she finally uh, hit one of those outside jumpers. That might uh, have gotten her confidence up a little bit. Michelle Milton picks up the foul as Rhonda Griffin started to make her move to the basket. Blocking foul indicated by the referee. 21-16. Lady Mustangs lead it by five. Two minutes, 37 seconds left, second quarter. Rhonda Griffin, her first trip to the foul line. She has six points, picked up two fouls in the first quarter and sat out much of the first quarter. Perfect from the foul line. Fundamentally, she is about as sound as you would uh, like to have a basketball player be. She does everything well. Shoots the ball well, but she passes well. Good court sense. She should be a good college player for somebody. She has seven. It looks to give the Lady Mustangs a seven-point lead. No good. Rebound underneath by the big girl, Becky Alston, for Southland. And a beautiful steal by Deanne Barker, but they've got her for double dribbling. Monroe has really caused problems for Southland when they get across the timeline. They're running a good trap out near midcourt. And uh, it has caused problems, like you mentioned. Right now, they're backing it off a little, playing a little 1-3-1 one, one zone. Julie Young directs traffic. From the corner, Martha Jean Billings, and she's starting to light it up from outside. She has six. Christy Cameron, nice move to the hoop. Beautiful bank shot. Monroe doesn't give you any time to get back and set up on defense. They're going to push it down the floor. And you can't, uh, you can't score and jog your way down the floor. They'll push it down and score on you like they just did. The Young for the Lady Mustangs can go up by eight with a basket. Kim Doan chips back in, and Julie Young will take a seat for Southland. Galen Lawson up top, Christy Cameron in the corner. Cameron goes inside. Rhonda Griffin gets triple team. Lawson's open. Her shot won't fall. 
Hawks. Rebound Becky Hall. Becky Halston tied up beautifully, though, by Deanne Barker. Halston grabbed the rebound, brought it down, and Barker promptly tied her up. Time out while they remove an object from the court. Tap is controlled by Southland. Michelle Milton dishes off to Kim Dome. Throw up pressure defense. Lob inside. Bodies fall everywhere, and Galen Lawson comes up with it for Monroe. To Christy Cameron. Stops off the glass and in. Another pretty fast break run by the Lady Mustangs. They, they had the numbers, the three on two. Little Galen Lawson, the nice dish. And Cameron took it to the bucket. Four for Christy Cameron. Monroe leads by eight, and Southland's turned it over. Another traveling call. It's the key time of the ball game, especially for Southland. They were only three points down moments ago, and now they're looking to go down ten. And still a uh, minute 20 left to play in the half. Lawson to the corner, Angie Dills. Cameron to Rhonda Griffin, nice fake, shot is blocked. And Southland goes the other way. Martha Jane Billings is double team, nowhere to go. Good trap. Kick against Monroe. Well, they had the good trap once again right here uh, as they cross the timeline. This time they'll keep the pressure on. And Monroe with a steal, beautiful defense. Parker to Lawson, she'll drive, lay it up, and in. Well, the trap is just causing all kinds of fits for Southland. They got the big girl up near midcourt, but uh, the teammates don't see her to lob her the ball. This time they do. Monroe by 10. Lady Mustangs are starting to pour it on. A bomb from the corner by Renee Reeves. Nothing but net. String music in <laughs> North Macon, Georgia right. on that one. <laughs> 23 seconds. Monroe will hold for one. Griffin and Lawson play catch near midcourt. David Lucy standing in front of his arms folded. They will have a foul called against number 20, Renee Reeves. Not a good foul there by Southland. You don't want to foul down eight with just a few seconds left in the half and give them a chance at two points. You'd rather make them earn it. Smart move here by David Lucy to get Ronnie Griffin out with two fouls. Just 12 seconds to go in the half. You don't want to pick up a cheap one right here. So uh, he gets two of his star players, Galen Lawson and Ronnie Griffin out, which is a very smart move. Lundy rebound. No, it wouldn't go. Eight seconds. Southland's got to go in a hurry, but they travel. Renee Reeves was in a hurry, too much of a hurry. Six seconds left. Monroe's got the basketball in an eight-point lead. Nobody knows who to come out front with Lawson out of the game. Finally, they get a point guard in Virginia there. Childs dishes to the corner. Lundy will fire and hit it at the buzzer. Janet Lundy from the corner. And the gym has erupted. The Monroe Lady Mustang fans are on their feet. Their team has taken a 10-point halftime lead. Monroe 30, Southland 20. You're watching live high school basketball on Channel 13. Against Mountain Sales, trying championship game with the Monroe Lady Mustangs leading by 10, 30 to 20. Brad, your impressions of the first half thus far? Well, I think it was pretty much the way we thought it would be, Frank. Uh, Monroe's press against Southland's size, and thus far the press has uh, been the difference, and it really has. Uh, they've turned the ball over against the press time and time again. Uh, even when they've defeated the press as far as the pressure out near midcourt, when they've gone inside with it, they've turned it over traveling-wise or they've thrown it out of bounds. And uh, so it's just uh, been to Monroe's advantage to keep the press on. The size uh, bothered them a little bit in the early part of the second quarter. But after that, they really started tightening up out near the midcourt line. And uh, right now, Southland's having problems even getting it across the line. Indeed. Now, Monroe has the 10-point lead, despite the fact that Rhonda Griffin picked up two fouls early in the first quarter and had to sit out much of the first quarter and a little bit of the second quarter. So David Lucy probably has to be pleased with the fact that his team is leading at this moment when his star players had to sit out a good portion of the first half thus far. You think Monroe will try to do anything different? you think they'll keep the pressure on the entire second half? Definitely so. When you're uh, 
when you're winning with something, there's no need to really change unless you were in foul trouble. And by getting Griffin out and uh, Galen Lawson out of the first half with only two fouls each uh, and avoiding that third personal foul, and he, I'm sure he'll keep the press on. It's been very effective thus far, and he's not going to change his game plan as much. Now, Southland, on the other hand, they're going to have to do something to uh, beat the press. You might look for him to bring both big girls back in, try to lob it up to the one big girl at midcourt, and then break it down and try to get it inside to the other big girl down on the block for a shot. Running down the first half scoring for Monroe there, led by Rhonda Griffin, as always. She is the senior. She has seven points. Deanne Barker and Janet Lundy both have six points apiece. Five for Galen Lawson, the sophomore point guard. Christy Cameron, just a ninth grader, made a couple of second quarter baskets. She has four, and Angie Jill Dills has two. That is a total of 30. For the Southland Lady Raiders, they are led in scoring by Martha Jane Billings. She has six points. Four for Renee Reeves, four for Lee Williams and Becky Austin, the two big girls, and two for Julie Young. That is your total of 20. 30 to 20, the Lady Mustangs lead. Monroe is now just 16 minutes away from a second consecutive girls' state championship. If they would hang on and win, it would be David Lucy's third since he came to Monroe. This is his seventh year. The Lady Mustangs will start off with Deanne Barker, Christy Cameron, Rhonda Griffin, Galen Lawson, and Angie Dills. As we just mentioned moments ago, we figured Southland would come out with both big girls, and that's exactly what they've done. So we'll have to see if that's what they decide to do. Becky Alston and Lee Williams are out there, along with Martha Jane Billings, Renee Reeves, and the tip controlled by Monroe. Julie Young is the fifth girl for Southland. Rhonda Griffin gets it up and in. First basket of the second half goes to Rhonda Griffin. And it's a 12-point Monroe lead. Southland better look out because the Lady Mustangs Maybe fixing to blow this one open. Well, they ran the trap out front right there uh, again, and this time uh, a bumping foul called on the road. And Barker picks up her second personal foul. David Lucy is always up, instructing his team what to do on the defensive end, but they've played a very solid defensive game thus far. Julie Young is up top. See if they try and go down low. They indeed do, but the only one there is Rhonda Griffin, and she's in the opposite colored uniform. Long pass, Christy Cameron. Nice fake, puts it up, and no good. Becky Austin controls for Southland. Cameron got the good shot, it just wouldn't fall. Julie Young breaks the half-court plane. From the corner, Renee Reeves is no good. Lee Williams rebound. Martha Jane Billings from way outside, no good. Rebound controlled by Deanne Barker. Good box out that time by the Lady Girls from Monroe. Dills inside, puts it up no, but she is fouled, and that'll be number three on Lee Williams. Monroe does the little thing so well, they move the ball up for it, got it inside. And Angie Dills will go to the foul line. Two for three in the first half. And she hits this one. Three points for Angie Dills. It is a 13-point Lady Mustang lead. Well, what's starting to happen is uh, Monroe's building the lead. Southland's going to have to come away from their game plan and play a more up-tempo game, and that's going to play right in Monroe's hands. Dills misses the second one. Southland needs a basket, and they need one bad. And Christy Cameron goes for the steal. Julie Young regains it, and we have a 10-second call. Monroe's defense has been outstanding thus far tonight. Lee Williams sits down for Southland and Maffitt's in. Dills, Deanne Barker. Lawson from way outside. It's short. And Martha Jane Billings starts up court, starts up court. Well, that one partially deflected. They were in the 1-3-1 zone, and when you're in the 1-3-1, you can spread out and cover the wings a little better. And Galen's shot was uh, partially blocked. Bad pass by Southland's Martha Jane Billings. Turn over to Monroe. Lady Mustangs can have their biggest lead of the night with a basket. They lead by 13. And travels. Well, Monroe's hit a rough stretch here the last two times down. But David Lucy's club is in command. 6-18 left, third quarter. Lob pass inside to Becky Alston. 
again, Monroe trapping as soon as they get across. Southland keeps getting in that bad position as soon as they cross the timeline. Reeves inside to Alston, up and off the glass and in. Southland's on the board in the second half. Becky Alston has six, the lead is down to 11. Griffin, beautiful feed to Dills, who hits the short shot. It's just great execution by Monroe. They don't let you celebrate after you score. You got to kick back and play defense, and that's uh, twice tonight that Monroe has gotten it after a Southland basket gone straight down and scored. Becky Alston alone underneath, puts it up and off the glass. She's hit two in a row. That's a good job of, break, 11. of breaking the press that time, and then they got it inside to Austin, and she was able to get the bucket off the glass. Griffin to Dills, difficult shot, almost got it to fall, but she did draw the foul. So Rhonda Griffin does not have the open shots, but she is getting the ball inside. Third foul on Big Becky Austin. And they can't afford to have either one of the big girls in foul trouble, and right now, Will Williams and Austin each have three. Dills. It's perfect with the first one. Angie Dills has six points on the night, four of them coming from the foul line. She's four of six from the charity strike. 12 point Monroe lead. The second one is also good, so Angie Dills with seven, and Monroe leads by 13, 37, 24. Alston to Reeves. Renee Reeves back up top. Martha Jane Billings. Reeves in the corner. Perfect. Renee Reeves lighting it up from the outside. She has six. The lead is down to 11. Griffin again inside to Dills. Ball deflected out by Southland. And once again, Monroe pushed it down the floor quickly. Try to go inside. They try to score on you before you can set your defense. On to Griffin. Angie Dill spins in the lane, puts up the short shot, no good. Rebound fought for, we have a foul. I believe on Deanne Barker. Barker came up with the basketball, but uh, guilty of uh, slapping the arm of Becky Austin, so she picked up the foul. That is Deanne Barker's third, but thus far David Lucy has not gone to the bench to substitute. His team leads by 11, 4.55 on a turning clock. Martha Jane Billings traveled. Just a 10th grader and the inexperience starting to show up right now for the Lady Raiders. Kayla Lawson went down right in front of us. Dills to Lawson. Christy Cameron, the freshman. Cut off. Rhonda Griffin, nice move. Short shot is up and in. Soft touch by Rhonda Griffin. She has 11. She has good touch on the basketball. She keeps her elbow in, perfect form, and shots like that will fall when you have good form. 13-point Monroe lead. Griffin goes for the steal, almost got it. And Mappet drives offensive foul against Mappet. Lee Williams will check back in for Southland, taking Becky Alston's place. Well, he's having to alternate his two big girls in there now. They each have three fouls, but the problem is they're both getting tired. He's having to bring them up and get them to work against the press, so they're having to play a press breaker as well as play offense and defense, and it's just uh, starting to take its toll a little bit. Kim Doan checks in. Julie Young goes out for Southland. Monroe by 13, four minutes, 10 seconds to go. Third quarter. Angie Dills up top to Deanne Barker. Now Galen Lawson. Rhonda Griffin in the corner. Looks inside. No opening there. Pass intercepted by Kim Doan. She'll take it all the way down. Lay it up and in. Well, Lawson made a mistake there. She won't make that one uh, probably again. She didn't look. She just turned and threw the basketball and right in the hands of the defense. Lawson will hit from the outside, but they call traveling. No basket. Traveling. 39-28, Southland down by 11, they've got the basketball. Well, this is a key part of the game for Southland. They're down 11 as we're starting to approach the uh, end of the third quarter. They're gonna make a run, they need to start pretty soon. They don't wanna get that far down going to the final quarter. Even though Monroe won yesterday, <laughs> doing just that. Martha Jane Billings is tied up in the corner and she dribbled it on the end line. See the referee making the call. Caitlin Lossing dribbling into your picture. Monroe leads by 11, 3.29 and a turning clock. Lawson at the top. Rhonda Griffin goes inside. Christy Cameron's short shot is no good. We've got a foul called against Southland. 
Monroe continuing to get it inside. David Lucy gesturing on the bench. And Mappet picks up her second, the fourth team foul. Christy Cameron will go to the line for two shots. She has four points. She's just a ninth grader. Oh, rolled out. David Lucy's got to be pleased with the players he's got coming back next year. I'm sure that'll be another favorite to uh, be in the state tournament again next year. Indeed. A lot of young folks. Cameron misses both her free throws. Southland will try and cut the lead to nine. Map it up top to Doan. The corner to Renee Reeves. Doan drives, puts it up. No, we've got a foul. Angie Dills will pick up her third. Virginia Childs and Janet Lundy will check in for the Lady Mustangs. Replacing Angie Dills and Christy Cameron. So David Lucy has his starting five in there, the five that started the game. Galen Lawson, Deanne Barker, Janet Lundy, Virginia Childs, and Rhonda Griffin. Kim Doan to the foul line. She shoots two. First is no good. Three minutes left, third quarter. Monroe up by 11. This is the girls' AAA state championship coming your way live on Channel 13. Second shot off the back, no good. Battle underneath. Lee Williams has got it. Her shot won't fall, and Williams is guilty of coming over the back. That'll, so be, that'll be her fourth foul, so uh, she'll have to come out. Good oh, uh, job of blocking out that time by the Lady Mustangs. Williams, in a little frustration, went over the back, and she'll have to come out. So a big play there as Williams missed the short shot and then fouled around the Griffin. Trying to get the rebound. Griffin shoots a one and one. You get a good look at the senior. Outstanding talent. And she hits the foul. Griffin has 12. The Lady Mustangs lead by 12. Run the second shot on its way. Again, perfect. 13 for Rhonda Griffin. 41 28. Monroe by 13. The Lady Mustangs continue to press. Falcon breaks it. Kim Doan, double teamed up top, goes through it. Renee Reeves inside. Becky Alston turns, goes on the other side. Rebound inside, put back up and in by Ann Mappet. Her first field goal. The Monroe back in a hurry. Virginia Child dishes off to Rhonda Griffin, who banks it up. No good. Southland can get within nine with a basket. First, they got to get it across the time court. And traveling against Kim Doan. Every time Southland seems to be in the verge of getting some momentum going, they make a turnover caused by that Monroe defense. Well, Monroe's pressing when they score, and now they're even pressing some when they don't score. That time they did not score, but they still picked up full court and caused the turnover. Childs gets the roll. Her first basket, Virginia Childs. It is now a 43 to 30 Monroe lead. with a steal. Restolen by Ann Mappet to Martha Jane Billings. She's the shooter. She fires one up. No, but she drew the foul. Threw up a prayer. She didn't go in, but she did get fouled. Now she seems a little frustrated on the offensive end. They haven't been getting the basketball to her as much as they would like to, and being the shooter she is. So that time she tried to create, but she did draw the foul, and she gets two shots. Deanne Barker picks up the foul. That is her fourth. She takes a seat in the bench. Christy Cameron takes her place. The Blues, I see the Blues brothers are here on the Southland side over there. <laughs> I was noticing them myself. Martha Jane Billings is way off with her first free throw attempt. <laughs> she has six all up in the first half, and there they are. <laughs> they have arrived. Sitting, standing on the Southland side. <laughs> Rebound, Becky Austin back up and in. Austin has 10. The Monroe lead has been cut to 11. Rhonda Griffin tries to save, and the ball took a hop over her head. That's very uncharacteristic of uh, Galen Austin and Monroe to turn it over like that against pressure. 
Well, they were playing on AstroTurf. The ball took just one big hop, and there was nothing Ronda Griffin could do about it. It just went right over her head. And Maffin wanted to go to the hoop, but she forgot to dribble the basketball. Turnovers continuing to plague Southland. Well, the pressure's having a lot to do with it. Even when they get away from somebody, get away from a double team, they're in such a hurry to go ahead and try to get a shot before that defense catches up, but uh, they're turning it over. 11-point Monroe lead, a minute 24 and a turning clock. Kenneth Lundy thought about it, no room inside. Lawson from way out, off the front rim. Rebound, Griffin's got it, throws it up, no good. Becky Austin rebounds. Southland would like to run. Julie Young all the way, puts it up, no, but she draws the foul. Rhonda Griffin, that'll be her third personal. She picked up two quick in the first quarter and then has managed to go until a minute four of the third quarter before picking up her third. Julie Young with the free throw line. First one is up and no good. Southland having all kinds of trouble from the foul line lately. Rachel Allen has checked back into the game for Southland. Young second. Good. So Julie Young, one of the two from the free throw line. It's a 10-point Monroe lead, a minute four left. Griffin, turnaround jumper blocked by Becky Alston. Griffin gets it back, though. Griffin drive, put it up. No, but she was hacked. And she draws number four on Becky Alston. Yeah, be four on uh, Austin. So now both of them, the South of Lee Williams and uh, Becky Austin have four each. But uh, Jerry Perkins will have to leave one of them in there. He's 10 points down with a little more than one quarter to play. There's no tomorrow. Uh, Rhonda Griffin shooting two. First one is up and no good. Oh, Hold off. Since I said that, he's bringing somebody in for us. But I'm sure that uh, he'll have to bring him back pretty soon down 10. That is Dawn Moore. She's just a 10th grader. So both Lee Williams and Becky Austin sit on the bench with four. Rhonda Griffin is about to shoot her second foul shot. It's good. She has 14 points. Monroe leads by 11. 50 seconds left in a turning clock third quarter. Julie Young driving it all the way to the hoop. Puts it up. No. They've called a foul against Monroe. Julie Young last two times down has taken it right to the hoop. And been able to draw the foul. Galen Lawson caught with the personal there. That is her third. First shot is good for Julie Young. She has four points. The Monroe lead is at 10, 44-34. 42 seconds left, third quarter. Young's next shot is up, rolls around, no good. And Rhonda Griffin clears the boards from Monroe, and she's in a hurry. Griffin, beautiful pass to Virginia Childs, up and no good. Rebound inside Christy Cameron, though. Tapped around, controlled by Southland. Again, it's Julie Young in a hurry. Again, she drives all the way, lays it up and in. Southland's now cut it back to eight. They're making a run right now. And a steal by Southland. Allen, drive, puts it up, no. Rebound, Maffitt, yes. And the lead is down to six at 44-38. And a foul called against number 32, Rachel Allen. Well, Southland uh, is really making a run here. And it's strange, Frank, they took the big throws out, and the quickness is what's got them back. They came up with a bucket, they got a steal and another hoop, and now it's a six-point game, and uh, this one's far from over. Eight seconds left, third quarter. Monroe leads by six. Christy Cameron to the line, one and one for the freshman. Big free throw here. And she hits it. Lady Mustangs do all the little things well, including shoot fouls. Cameron has five. Second one is no good. Rebound by Martha Jane Billing. Six seconds. Clock winding down. Maffitt fires at the buzzer. No good. So we've completed three quarters of play from Stratford in the girls' AAA state championship game, Monroe 45, Southland 38. You're watching live high school basketball on Channel 13. AAA championship, 
Monroe 45, Southland 38. The Lady Mustangs led by as much as 13 in the third quarter. It now stands at seven. Southland can cut it to five with a basket. Julie Young up top. She's the one that's keyed this comeback. She takes it in the middle, loses the ball. And Monroe's defense has caused a turnover, a jump ball. Rhonda Griffin and Ann Mappet will jump it. to get into this one. 7.48 left in the girls' AAA state championship. Half controlled by Christy Cameron of Monroe. Ball stolen by Rachel Allen, though. Julie Young brings it up for Southland. Young's in a hurry. Allen dishes inside to Becky Austin, who hits the bucket. Good feed inside there by Allen. The lead is at 5.45-40. Griffin takes it all the way, short jumper is up, no good. Rebound inside, controlled by Southland. The Lady Raiders are running. Monroe's back on defense, Julie Young. Martha Jane Billings, shot will not count because we had traveling against Julie Young. Well, Jerry Perkins did not like that one at all. He thought that Young was bumped. But once again, it's that Monroe defense, that pressure defense. Lawson's up top. Christy Cameron thinks about it. Tries to go inside. Angie Jones gets it back. We've got three seconds called against Monroe. So Southland has the basketball and a chance to cut the lead to three, and Virginia Childs will quickly check in for Monroe, taking Janet Lundy's place. 45-40, Monroe by five. Live high school basketball here on Channel 13. and gets it across the timeline. Rachel Allen back up top to Julie Young. Young dishes inside to Becky Alston. Her short shot is up and no good. And Alston is fouled out of the ball game going for the rebound. Well, they got what they wanted right there. They got it inside to uh, Austin. And she just missed the short shot, but uh, they got what they wanted offensively. It just wouldn't fall that time. Austin gets it going over the back. See Jerry Perkins comforting Becky Austin, who fouls out with 12 points. She played a very strong game. She had eight points in the second half. She just could not get the short shot to fall. And then Monroe, of course, they get such excellent position. Angie Dills blocked out, and Austin came over her back. So Dills at the foul line. First one is up and good. Angie Dills has eight. Six of them have come from the foul line. She's been very effective from the charity strike tonight. Monroe leads it by six. Make that seven. The Lady Mustangs do those little things so very well. 47-40, Monroe, 6.35 left in a turning clock. We're in the fourth and final quarter. Rachel Allen back up top to Martha Jane Billing. Julie Young. Monroe still with the pressure defense. Billings dishes off to Rachel Allen. Young will try it. In again, out again, rebound, Christy Cameron. Cameron will break the press herself. She'll take it all the way. She'll stop, pull it up. Won't fall. Rebound, jump ball underneath. Virginia Childs and Rachel Allen will jump it up. Plenty of time left uh, for Southland, Frank. They're only seven down. They're going to have to convert when they start getting the basketball on the offensive end. Christy Cameron puts it up and in and got it. And a foul call. <laughs> Rachel Allen with a foul. Christy Cameron the basket. And Jerry Perkins wants a timeout. So with 6.03 left, we'll take a timeout. We're live from Stratford. It's Monroe 49, Southland 40. You're watching live high school basketball on Channel 13. Christy Cameron's free throw trying to complete the three-point play is no good, but Virginia Childs controls for Monroe. They lead 49-40, just under six minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Griffin looks inside, now back to Childs. Virginia starts her drive. Ball deflected out of bounds. It'll still belong to Monroe. Well, it looks like uh, 
Southland's gone to a triangle and two, uh, a box and one rather, or a diamond and one defense. Man to man on Rhonda Griffin with Nancy Allen and the rest in the zone. The corner good. And the Lady Mustangs lead by 11. Well, that's what happens when you try to man somebody and zone the rest if you're not used to playing it. You get caught out of position and they got the easy hoop. Jill Dills picks up the foul for Angie Dills, her fourth. So Monroe has built her lead back up to 11. Rachel Allen will go to the foul line. She's looking for her first point on the night. No good. Rebound controlled by Ann Maffet. Her turnaround is good. Maffet has six all in the second half. The lead is nine. Full court pressure now by Southland. Monroe gets it to Rhonda Griffin for Virginia Childs. Angie Dills to Galen Lawson. The Lady Mustangs have broken the press. Now they go man to man. South from man to man defense. Inside Cameron. Her shot is no good. Dills battles for the rebound and will have a jump ball. Angie Dills doing a good job on the backboards tonight. She will jump against Ann Maffitt for Southland. 503 left fourth quarter. Monroe by nine. Ball tipped twice should belong to Monroe. And it will. Rhonda Griffin will inbound. The Virginia Child has got a whistle called away from the ball. And Angie Dills has fouled out of the game. And Deanne Barker will take her place. So Angie Dills commits her fifth foul away from the ball. Well, an illegal screen that time. They were inbounding against the man-to-man -man defense. Dills trying to go screen for somebody, and she was guilty of the illegal pick. Common foul when you're working against man-to-man -man defense. Martha Jane Billings at the foul line. And Southland having all kinds of troubles hitting their free throws. And when you're down by a nine, you can't afford to miss any. Lawson. Long pass, Virginia Childs. She brings it back out. Monroe is in no hurry. They lead by nine. We're under five minutes to play fourth quarter. Rhonda Griffin. Thought about it and dishes out. Childs. Deanne Barker puts it up short. Rebound, Lee Williams. Southland can cut it to seven with a basket. But Monroe is playing that tough defense. And a long pass overthrown by Ann Maffin. That defense again, proving to be the key for Monroe. Yeah, it's caused problems all night long. It's continuing here in the fourth quarter. Only 4.31 left, and uh, Southland's gonna have to start to converting each and every time down. You get the overhead shot here from Stratford. Beautiful Jim. Brady Smith and crew doing a fine job putting on this boys and girls championship. Michelle Milton picks up the foul, and she fouled the wrong person because that sends Rhonda Griffin to the line, playing her last game in a Monroe Lady Mustangs uniform. She is the leader of this club for David Lucy. Had an outstanding senior season, considered the top private school player in the middle of Georgia area. Griffin hits that one in the state, for that matter. Rhonda Griffin will take her second and try and give her team an 11-point lead. She is perfect on both. 16 points for Rhonda Griffin. The Lady Mustangs lead by 11. 427 left to play fourth quarter. Well, right when Southland seemed to get a little fire and come back, Monroe able to put out the fire. Now they have a, a comfortable 11 point lead with just 425 to go. Lady Mustangs doing what they have done all year. They make the big plays at the right time. Michelle Milton will take it all the way, put it up and in, but it will not count. Offensive foul, Michelle Milton. That's similar to the play we had last night in the boys' championship game, or the boys' semifinal game between Stratford and DeSales. John Elvin went to the basket, scored, but in high school basketball, an offensive foul overrules a bucket of any kind. Unlike the college rule, even if you let go of the ball before the contact is made, the basket is disallowed. And so that's why the bucket did not count right there. The end, Barker's alone underneath. She misses the shot, but she is fouled by Ann Maffet. So Deanne Barker, playing her final game in Lady Mustangs uniform, will go to the line. She has six points, all of them coming in the first half. Not only 
certainly were the Monroe Lady Mustangs picked to win the state uh, championship this year and uh, picked as the best team. They probably came out of the toughest region as far as uh, the competition goes with uh, FPD making it all the way to the semifinals. Stratford's girls were excellent this year. Well, so they, first they, they, they had played good competition all year long. That was my point of the whole thing. Well, they were tournament tough and coming in and it showed yesterday when they came from 10 down in the fourth quarter. Second free throw for Deanne Barker is good. She gets one out of two. She now has seven. It's a 12 point Monroe lead with just over four minutes left. David Lucy's club four minutes away from claiming yet another state championship. Lee Williams inside puts it up off the glass. No good. Christy Cameron's got the rebound for Monroe. Kaylin Lawson gets it across the timeline to Virginia Childs. Well, they're going to go with the spread now and run some clock. Monroe blessed with an abundance of good ball handles. You've got Child, Ron Griffin, Galen Lawson. They can all handle the ball very well. Well, they got a double high stack with one person in the middle handling the basketball. She gets in trouble. She can feed to one of two players breaking from either side. It's a good delay tactic, and a lot of teams, both uh, high school and college, use this uh, delay setup. Southland seem to have a little trouble defending it. They go back door. Christy Cameron hits the jumper. That's why it's so effective. Right there, that was ran for perfection. If the defense wants to overplay you, you simply go back door and you get a, a layup or a short shot, and that's what uh, Monroe got right there. Kaylin Lawson picks up the foul. That is her fourth. Jerry Perkins will take a timeout. We'll keep it here. Monroe leading 56 to 42 with just three minutes and eight seconds left. It appears Lady Mustangs are going to be tough to beat, especially as you said, the way they run the delay game. They did it to perfection the last time down. What kind of defense do you try and employ against that type of ball? That There's not using? much you really can do. You've got to play man to man because you can't play a zone when you're down. You've got to have the ball. So you have to come out and play a tough man to man. What you've got to make sure of is that you don't give up a layup. You want to try to gamble out on the floor, but you can't uh, gamble to the fact that you get out of position, which is what happened a moment ago. And uh, Monroe noticed it. They went back door and they shot a layup. What they're going to have to do is try to double team the ball out near the timeline with a person in the middle. And then they're going to have to make sure they keep somebody back on the in the safety position and not give up a layup. Right now, though, you got if you're south and you're probably going to foul and uh, it's probably going to come in, come down to a free throw shooting contest. And Monroe's proved all year long they can do that. The Lady Mustangs are three minutes and eight seconds away from winning. The SCAIF Girls State Triple A Championship. 56 42. They lead it by 14. Well, Galen Lawson just picked up her fourth foul. We still have three minutes, eight seconds left to play, but uh, David Lucy would like to have her on the floor for the final 308. She is the best ball handler, and she will start in the middle. They could put either her or Rhonda Griffin in the middle against the uh, on the delay game, but uh, he'd like to have both of them in there going down the stretch. Julie Young will be at the free throw line for Southland, shooting the one and one. She has six points. Make that seven. The lead is down to 13, but there's only three minutes and eight seconds left to play. Second shot is also good, so Julie Young converts. Give her eight points on the night. Inbounds pass stolen by Southland. Ball deflected out of bounds by Galen Lawson. From the corner, shot is no good by Mappet. Rebound Monroe. Childs, as Julie Young has come up lame in the backcourt. It appears to be her knee. Now you see in the middle of your picture, number 14, Julie Young. She's the one that led that brief Southland surge late in the third quarter that got him back into the game. She has played coast to coast the entire game, both offensively and defensively. Terry Perkins, the head coach of Southland, checking out the knee, and now Julie Young will be helped off the court, and she'll receive a nice round of applause. So Julie Young leaves, having scored eight points. She's just a sophomore. And she might uh, see many state uh, championship games before she leaves. The end marker inbounds from in front of us to Virginia Childs. Childs, a very good ball handler. She traveled. Crowd started yelling, watch it. Virginia quickly pulled up but shuffled her feet. Well, they were trying to run and get that trap like we mentioned out near the timeline. And uh, she not only heard footsteps, she heard the crowd. That's right. 
she decided to stop right there. Martha Jane Billings, wow, bingo! Billings, her first points of the second half, she has eight, the lead is at 10, 2.39 left in a turning clock. And Monroe turns it over, Christy Cameron could not control the pass. Southland can cut it to eight with a basket. Michelle Milton, she took Julie Young's place when Young went to the sidelines. Inside, Lee Williams throws it up too hard. Rebound underneath, Williams has got it back, tries it again and gets it. Lee Williams has her sixth point of the night. It's an eight point lead at 56-48. Well, they're starting to make another run, but uh, they might be just about out of time, we'll have to see. Rhonda Griffin knocked to the ground, no foul. We do have a foul called now against Kim Doan as Virginia Childs brought it across the timeline. Well, Monroe is so used to bringing the ball up quick, they've done it all year long. Even when they score, even when the other team scores, that uh, they're having a little <laughs> bit of trouble making the transition. Here, they've got the lead. They don't need to push it up the floor as fast. They can take their time. But sometimes it's hard to convince your team when you've done the same thing the entire game long to change. Virginia Childs, free throw, no good. Ryan to Griffin's got the rebound, puts it back up. She was bumped by one of her own teammates. And the ball still belongs to Monroe. Ronda oh, Griffin grabbed the rebound, the missed foul shot, started to put it up and got bumped by one of her own teammates. But the ball last touched by Southland. The end marker to inbound. Christy Cameron turns around, fires, no good. Rebound, foul on Cameron. Well, David Luce is going to take a timeout and get his troops together here, Frank. He has an eight-point lead. They really don't need any more points. And he might be telling his crew, hey, let's don't shoot unless it's a layup. Christy Cameron, just a ninth grader. She had about a six-footer, but it would not fall. And then in her haste to grab the rebound, she fouled. So it's a 56-48 Monroe lead with two minutes left to play in the fourth quarter. And Southland will be going to the free throw line to shoot a one-and-one. One. Well, Cameron, the majority of the time, will make that shot. But the point is, when you're up eight uh, and you're going down the stretch, you'd rather have the ball out front and run some clock. They haven't been in their delay in the, in the last minute. And I'm sure that's what David Luce is going to tell them right now. Hey, we've got the lead. Let's just hold on to the basketball when we get it. Make them foul us or let's shoot a layup off the delay game. You see the Monroe cheerleaders out there. Getting their side of the stands fired up. We've almost got a full house here at Stratford now as the crowd not only here to watch this one, but also the boys' championship game, which will follow between the Cavaliers of Mount Sales and the Savannah Red Raiders. You'll be able to see that one take delay tonight at 11.30, and we hope you'll tune in tonight following Eyewitness News for the Mount Sales savannah game. We are back to live action, and Lee Williams will be at the free throw line. She's got six points. This is her first trip to the charity stripe. Chance to cut the lead to seven. And she does. Well, she's played the... Uh, the entire fourth quarter with four personal fouls. And it's yet to foul out. And it's played aggressive, too. Her second one, also good. Lead down to six. We've got two minutes left. Virginia Childs will inbound to Galen Lawson. Lawson gets it across the timeline. Ball deflected out of bounds. And good for Southland. Oh. That was the explanation we just heard from the official. We're getting down to cases now. The basket could cut it to four. Kim Doan inside the Lee Williams. Ball out of bounds. They'll give it to Monroe. Looked like Kim Doan was going to shoot. I think Lee Williams caught that. She turned her basket on the play, and thus the ball went out of bounds. Monroe will inbound. Galen Lawson's got it. Ron Griffin, Deanne Barker. Locker up top to Galen Lawson. A minute 40 left. They'll give it to Southland. They say it with Virginia Childs last. Another close call. Looks like the defense might have gotten a hit on it. And uh, that's exactly what. Uh, From way outside, yes. Michelle Milton hits the lead. Is at four with a minute 29 left. 56 52. Griffin to Childs. Christy Cameron, triple team, and foul by Kim Doan. Uh, Jerry Perkins isn't too disappointed with a foul. They're down four with 1.21 to go. At least they fouled in an effort to go for the basketball, and it's a one-in-one -one situation. Their pressure defense has really given uh, Monroe some problems, though, here. See Julie Young limping into the picture behind you. 
she is back into the ball game, and Renee Reeves goes out. Christy Cameron, a ninth grader, shooting one and one. Her team leads by four. No good, tipped around, Cameron controls, back up and in. Big basket, Christy Cameron. And the lead is at six. Williams had her hand on it for Southland, but she didn't grab it and pull it down. And Cameron stayed right with it. Billings, up top to Julie Young. Kim Doan will fire, no good. Rebound controlled by Rhonda Griffin to Galen Lawson. This is Deanne Barker. Cameron, short shot up and in. Christy Cameron is it two in a row and the lead is back to eight. We're under a minute to play. And they are so comfortable about just pushing it up the floor. They don't want to slow it down for anything. But you see a jumper made right there. Michelle Milton is hit two in a row. 39 seconds left, Monroe by six. Near steal by Julie Young. Instead, she gets caught with a foul. So Christy Cameron, the ninth grader, has come through with two big baskets for the Lady Mustangs. We have her for 13 points on the game. And Virginia Childs will go to the line for Monroe. The Lady Mustangs lead by six with 36 ticks left on the clock. There you see Virginia, just a junior. She has scored four points. Make it five. And Virginia Childs may be hammering the nail into the coffin here of the Southland Lady Raiders. This would put Monroe by eight. Perfect. Childs hits them both. The Lady Mustangs by eight. Milton again from outside. No, Doan rebounds for Southland. Martha Jane Billings. Kim Doan way outside. No good. And Virginia Childs rebounds for Monroe. 20 seconds left and Childs is fouled in the backcourt by Michelle Milton. It looks like Monroe has withstood the final gasp of the Southland Lady Raiders. Well, they've gone to the free throw line and knocked them down when they've had to. And now they get another chance here. And good free throw shooting will win a lot of basketball games for you. And Monroe's been able to do that all year long. You saw the clock a minute ago. 20 ticks left. Virginia Child just hit two from the line. Three in a row. And she is just driving them home. David Lucy doing something uh, good now. He's getting some of the other players in the ballgame a chance to play in a state final. Rhonda Griffin has just gone out. He gets a big hug from Coach Lucy. Here goes the other senior, Deanne Barker, congratulated by David Lucy, as he got his other two seniors in. Number 25, Laney Fort. Also, Janet Lundy has checked in. Virginia Childs can put the Lady Mustangs up by 10. And she has done it. Four straight from the foul line for Virginia Childs. He hit nothing but net every time. 16 seconds, clock winding down. Amy Williams inside shot is no good. Williams gets it back. She puts it up off the glass and in. Amy Williams hits. Six seconds. The clock winding down. Christy Cameron. Virginia Childs is fouled with two ticks left on the clock. And Monroe leading it by eight. And they will successfully defend the girls' SEAIS AAA state championship. Well, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> it has not been easy. There's no better feeling, and I know from experience, that... Uh, being out on the court in the final few seconds of a ball game, going to the free throw line, you're standing out there absorbing it all in. You know you've won, and there's no feeling uh, quite like it. And, and look that's who's at the line. Going through the Lady Mustangs' minds right now. Virginia Childs. Five in a row, and everyone's been right in the middle. We said she will be back next year, as will Galen Lawson, as will Janet Lundy, as will Christy Cameron. Two seconds left, Monroe by nine. Make it 10 as Childs hits six straight. One long shot, no good, it's all over. And the Monroe Lady Mustangs have done it again. 66 to 56. They have knocked off the Southland Lady Raiders. The Lady Raiders, and there you see the celebration at midcourt. Monroe winner will be back for all the celebration in Hoopla. You're watching live high school basketball on Channel 13. We are back for the presentation of the championship trophy. Grady Smith, the head basketball coach and athletic director at Stratford. 
and ready to present the trophy. The head coach David Lucy and the Monroe Lady Mustangs. And you can see that there's Bedlam here on the court. The Lady Mustangs have won their second consecutive AAA state championship. Their third under David Lucy. And we'll be attempting to get a word with Coach Lucy as soon as he can manage to get himself away from this crowd. As <laughs> you can see from our up top camera. And it, indeed, it is wild. Now, we're sending Brad Bibb now out into the crowd to get Coach Lucy. Indeed, it has to be a big moment for the Lady Mustangs. As we said, they were picked to be the team to beat all season long. And so they were the ones, the mark team, and they had to struggle. They had trouble with Patnell in the opening round of the region, came from behind to win it. And we are swinging Coach Lucy over into the camera range right now. And we've got him down here. David, congratulations. I know it has to be a great feeling. This is the third time you've experienced it, but really your team played well and you deserved it. Well, we appreciate it, Frank. We want to first thank Channel 13 for bringing <laughs> girls basketball to the middle of Georgia area. It's, I believe this is the first, and we really thank all the coverage we've had throughout the year. But, you know, overall in the victory, I think right now I'm feeling more of a relief than anything else, you know, because the pressure was on us the whole year. Everybody expected us to win the thing, and we've done it. So I'm so proud of these seniors mainly because you've got to think, since they've been sophomores, they've been in the state finals three times and won the state championship twice, and I think that's a great accomplishment. Brad and I talked about that. You were the marked team. Last year it was Windsor, and you, of course, beat them in the region and got in the good bracket and managed to make your way to the finals. And, of course, you even told me earlier this week a lot of people thought you had the easy draw last year, and that was one of the reasons why you won it. But this year you did not have the easy draw. Everybody wanted a piece of the Lady Mustangs, but you kept it going. You really did play well. Right. We, no, we weren't to be denied this year. We're, we were undefeated in 1985. Nobody touched us this whole year. Now, we lost some in 84, but no, we just played super basketball throughout. And we proved even when we play, play bad, we can win, as evidenced by yesterday. We had, I think, 33 turnovers and still won the ball game. So these, all I can say about these girls, they're just a bunch of winners. And that, that sums them up perfectly. I think they're a bunch of winners. What about the way this game went? You would appear to take command. You'd build the big lead. They'd make a run at you. Fourth quarter, you were up by 11 or 12, and they came back at you again. It was just sort of the ebb and flow, and you never really could put it away until the end. Well, you have to give Southland credit. They never quit. You know, they were confident they could come back against us. And when you got those two big girls, they just lobbed the ball inside, and we, we couldn't stop them. But, you know, it came down to the free throw line. We missed some big foul shots. But you know, I've got to give Southland credit for not quitting. In a state championship game, you can throw all the records out the window, and it's who wants it the most. And you know, we wanted just, I think, a little bit more than they did. Indeed, David, again, congratulations. You've done it again. Next year, you'll again be the Mark team. You've got a lot of people coming back. But go enjoy it. Your team's cutting down the net. They probably want you to cut down a strand. And congratulations again. Thanks a lot, Frank. We appreciate it. Indeed, our pleasure. And so we are coming to you from Stratford. We'll be back to wrap it up after this time out. You're watching live high school basketball on Channel 13. Stratford, we have just seen the Monroe Lady Mustangs win their second consecutive girls' state AAA championship, 66 to 56 over Southland. We are now being joined by Monroe's splendid senior, Rhonda Griffin. Rhonda, there was pressure on your team all season long. How did your team react? How did you manage to handle? Because everybody wanted to beat you after you won last year. We just had to keep our cool. We know, we know, we had everybody out there, and there was Jason to come out and beat us. But we had to keep our cool. And we really had to work. We knew, we knew what we were having to work for. We knew everybody was after us. But we had to just stay calm about it and just wore it, really wore it. What about this game? You picked up two quick personal fouls. And when you came back into the game, were you a little bit nervous or not? Did you worry about that third foul, or how did you play? Yeah, I was kind of nervous about it, but I tried to I tried to keep it easy on defense. I tried to play good, solid defense and not go too crazy, but I, I tried to play your solid. Was this game harder because it was the championship? I mean, I know you didn't want to end your, your great career in a losing note. Was there a little more pressure on this game than some of the others you had played, or the fact that you had such a tough game yesterday make this one easy? Well, we tried to think of it as just a game, but there really was. It was a state game. I mean, can't take it too easy, but we tried to get to it as just another game. How does it feel to win two straight state championships? It feels great. It really does. Rhonda, congratulations. They're still cutting down the net. We appreciate it. Thank you. Rhonda Griffin, Monroe's splendid senior, who helped her team win a second consecutive state AAA championship. Brad Bibb and I will be back to wrap it up. You're watching live high school basketball right here on Channel 13.
Frank Malloy and Brad Bibb with you back from courtside here at Stratford Academy. We have just seen Monroe knock off Southland 66 to 56. Brad, your impressions of the game and how the Mustangs won the state title? Well, it was pretty much the way we expected. In fact, I think we have reiterated this over and over throughout the course of the ball game. Monroe did what they had to do, and they did what they've done all year long. They pressed, they forced the action, they played an up-tempo game, which is what they wanted to do. Southland tried to go inside. They had some success with it, but when they were successful, then Monroe was able to adjust to it, and they were able to control the tempo and uh, the momentum, and that's what uh, the difference was to me. We attribute really the way David Lucy coaches this team because they got a couple of big baskets from a ninth grader late in the fourth quarter in that type of situation. You don't really expect freshmen to be doing things like that, and he really could go about eight deep, and his players responded when they had to under pressure. They sure did, and the young players as well as the seniors are all fundamentally sound, and that's another point that we stated over and over again. He does a super job of teaching them to pass, to dribble, fundamentals of basketball, and that's what creates winners, and that's why they've won two state championships in a row. But we've enjoyed bringing you this live coverage of the girls state triple a championship we remind you to stay tuned at 11 30 tonight for the boys triple a state championship that'll match the cavaliers of mount the sales against the savannah christian red raiders it should be a very interesting matchup what type of ball game do you expect do you expect mount the sales to try and work on the big guy inside and go with slocum or they might that should be interesting now mount the sales has not played anybody that's had the size that they have all year long and this will be their first test uh, vickers is 6'9", so he'll be the biggest player on the floor slocum stands six seven jumps real well he likes to play out on the floor though so it'll be interesting to see if Mount DeSales tries to go inside with Slocum or let him play out on the perimeter and make the big guys come out after him. Of course there will be pressure on Mount DeSales they were the team that most folks thought had the best team last year they lost in the semifinals to Calvary Baptist this year again people say with most of the folks coming back from last year Slocum and not all inside again Mount DeSales carries the favorites role but they still have one more hurdle to overcome and Savannah Christian has been playing very well. They have been playing well what we talked about earlier it doesn't matter what you've done during the season Savannah Savannah's record was not that impressive, 16 and 6 coming in. But it's not what you've done before, it's what you've done in the tournament. Savannah's played very well, and something that might be on their side. All they've done all week long is hear about Stratford and Mountain Sales, how they're the best two teams in the state, and they come in here to the championship game, and you'd have a hard time convincing them right now that they're not the best team in the state. So they've got everything to gain coming in here tonight. Of course, Savannah Christian has already won the AAA State Football Championship. They beat Southland last December to win that one, so they'll be trying to go for two in a row in the basketball championship. As we said, that'll be coming your way live or tape delay tonight at 11.30. It should be a good one. Brad Bibb, my Frank Malloy, we've enjoyed bringing you this girls' state championship game live right here on Channel 13. We'll hope you stay tuned. Don't forget Eyewitness News at 11. Brad will have the highlights. And then at 11.30, Mount the Sales and Savannah. It should be a very entertaining matchup and one which could pretty much go either way. Yeah, if we could get everybody out of the gym, we got to put new nets up, sweep the floor, and once again, we'll live it all over again. It should be a good one. Mount the Sale, the favorite. Savannah may be the spoiler. It should be a good one. We hope you'll join us for uh, the complete coverage tonight at 11.30. And the final here again, Monroe 66. And Southland 56 for the second year in a row, David Lucy's Monroe Lady Mustangs will wear the state championship crown. It did not come easily. Southland made a couple of runs at them late in the game. Monroe did what they had to do. Please join us tonight at 1130. So long, everybody. <laughs>